we have a big hurricane heading towards the U.S. and it continues to look worse. So let's start off with the latest update on the satellite picture. First off, this is Franklin out here in the open waters of the Atlantic and luckily it is because right now it's a category 4 942 millibar 130 mile per hour beast out there in the open waters of the Atlantic but further south is what we're concerned about with right now tropical storm Edelia 65 mile per hour it actually was stationary overnight but it's luckily moving northbound the longer it actually stays over up waters the greater the probability as it continues to intensify and it's going to be running into this cold front. This cold front is dropping southbound and back behind it. It's got less humid, drier, and much cooler conditions back behind this. Add ahead of it, you got the superior air mass. So you're still going to be getting showers and thunderstorms. But this front is going to be the steering mechanism that's going to be driving this into Florida and actually eventually out back into the open waters of the Atlantic. So here's the latest update from Edelia. It's a 65 mile per hour tropical storm moving northbound at eight miles an hour and likely going to be a hurricane by the time we get into this afternoon time frame. Hurricane hunters are sampling the storm and it continues to strengthen in the latest update. This is new folks now expected to be a major hurricane by landfall. So yes, we're about 48 hours, 54 hours away of this possibly being another major hurricane for the seventh year in a row for the US. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel and I would love to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And you can help, my, help me get there by subscribing to the channel. I'll be doing daily updates uh, throughout fall and winter on this channel. So let's take a look at the setup and how this is all going to play out. Here's the setup. So you've got Franklin out here in the open waters of the Atlantic. You've got Adelia down here in the Caribbean. There's that cold front, right? It's replaced by much cooler light conditions. The, the ridge is going to be backing off into the west, and that's what's allowing this cold front and going to be steering this Edelia into Florida as much of the much of the uh, eastern two-thirds of the u.s is kind of get a a break from you know from the warmer conditions in the central u.s and much of the southern plains will be replaced by much cooler and uh, drier conditions and you can see by tuesday all this kind of gets its act together down here into the Gulf of Mexico with this massive blob coming in, rearing its ugly head towards Florida. But there's all the brown highlighted across much of the U.S. That is that that is that cold front that's dropping southbound. It's going to be replaced with much drier light conditions. So you've got several days to look forward to of just kind of less humid air and a little bit cooler you know, considering what you've been, you know, as of late. But the latest run on some of these global guidances is kind of worrisome, right? Where this has been pretty consistent. This is why the National Hurricane Center up the ante and went ahead and said, hey, this could likely be a major hurricane at landfall. Here's the latest a GFS model, about a 961 millibar uh, possible hurricane as it makes a uh, landfall but other guidances are even stronger than that so here's the latest cone so this is the latest cone from the national hurricane center by the time we head into august 30th around one o'clock in the morning it could very well be a 150 mile per hour hurricane and maximum wind gust up to 140 miles an hour the cone is still from Apalachicola to Tampa. The one thing it has done, it's actually shifted a little bit further south towards Tampa. And that's all because the, the longer it's able to stay out in the waters, the further intensification it's going to be. And the more the greater probability gets it gets kind of picked up with this front coming in right so the, the you know the faster this system is the further north it's going to be the slower this system is the further off it, it towards uh, tampa this is going to be in the trajectory but it's all you know going to be remaining as a storm the entire time it, it doesn't actually lose its name it continues to remain at least a tropical storm through jacksonville and back out into the open waters you know of the atlantic and what's concerning and what's been consistent is the hurricane models now two days ago we highlighted this 
it dropped down to a 933 millibar low pressure and here it is two days later it's still a 935 right so that is very concerning these hurricane models have been pretty consistent throughout the years have been pretty accurate folks and this is what's concerning it's calling for a possible category four hurricane at landfall so this is definitely concerning it's been consistent like this for the last two days i mean it's got a lower shear environment obviously these waters are extremely warm it's untapped energy we haven't had a storm in this area in the gulf of mexico and the the waters continue to you know elevate and, and get uh, warmer the further into the coast so this is going to be a storm that's going to be continuing to intensify basically until it makes landfall it'll hit its peak intensity right when it makes landfall so here's the the latest storm surge and this is also concerning folks this is the map the yellow shaded areas around two to four feet the orange shaded areas around four to seven and the red shaded areas up to 11 feet and you know highlight into tampa here this could easily go up with the slower type system so don't let your guard down there's likely going to be a lot of evacuations along the west coast of florida today and if you're if you live anywhere along the coast if you're gonna leave now is the time to do it folks while there's plenty of gas in there and there's it's 48 to 54 hours it's coming to florida there's no question about it it's going to be making landfall and it's going to continue to intensify until it makes landfall so don't let your guard town that hey it's only a tropical storm right now it is definitely expected to be a major hurricane uh, if not even stronger than that, maybe a category four hurricane at landfall. So that is definitely concerning and it's going to be having a lot of rain rainfall with it as well. So anywhere from Tampa to Tallahassee and this swath is going to be swinging right into Jacksonville into Savannah, back into Charleston, all the way up into Wilmington. So this whole area is going to get raked with extremely heavy rain, two, three, almost four inches per hour rainfall rates with this particular system and then even inland as well so you could still get pockets of heavier rains draped across montgomery you know atlanta getting into birmingham back uh, all the way up to chattanooga into knoxville these areas back into roanoke all the way up into richmond and the raleigh durham area yes you could still see two to four inches of rain likely Further south, you're likely going to be in the six to eight, even some double digit totals, maybe not out of the question. It might be moving a little bit too fast for getting some, du some double digit totals, but you never can roll out an isolated area. But what's also concerning with these uh, tropical landfalls is tor tornadic spin up. So yes, we're looking at tornadoes possible uh, all the way through Sarasota into the Tampa region. That does include Orlando region back into Gainesville even along into the East Coast, into uh, Daytona Beach, Palm Coast, back up into Jacksonville. So this is also a concern. This will likely be extended and likely hitting parts of the Southeast, you know, as we go into that Wednesday timeframe. But the breakdown, here's your wind threat. Sorry, this map's probably a little bit blurry for you, but gives you an idea of the purple shaded area where you're expecting the 110 mile per hour uh, hurricane force wind gusts with this particular storm. Here's your tornado threat, your probably highest probabilities of seeing a tornadic spin up with this storm. And here's your greatest storm surge, right? So all these highlighted areas in purple have your greater possibilities of the highest storm surge, you know, with this storm. But here's the satellite picture on the latest uh, you know, hurricane model. And this is that serious eye we talked about. This would be actually equaling what Franklin is right now. If this actually comes to fruition, got a long ways to go to get there, but these storms have really intense, you know, have a, a tendency to really intensify, especially once it gets a low level center. So once it gets a low level center, all systems go with this system and definitely concerning these hurricane models have been just so consistent with this storm for two days now it's literally been calling for a major hurricane and now the national hurricane center has you know highlighted that and said hey yeah this is going to be coming in as a major hurricane we need to take this thing seriously we need to start you know having some evacuations in order and start hunkering down and uh, prepare for this storm because it is definitely coming there's no question about it uh here's the setup right so there's franklin and there's uh, edalia 
and it's going to be you know making landfalls a likely a, a major hurricane going to be traversing over the jacksonville area as still a minimal hurricane or a strong tropical storm still uh and then heading out into the open waters off the coast of south carolina and look what happens <laughs> it actually looks to merge with actually franklin and as it goes out into the open waters of the atlantic and and then what happens is there's a lot of energy right i mean you got you got to take a lot of energy in the atmosphere and look how much water vapor is associated with these right so it takes up so much look at that deep blue you got two possible major hurricanes coming taking all a lot of the energy out of the atmosphere and a lot of precipitation along with it now those systems are likely going to be heading back out into the open waters of the atlantic right so what does that do that pulls all the energy major hurricanes have a tendency to say cleanse the atmosphere and kind of dries it out because it sucks all the moisture it takes so much energy to fuel a major hurricane you got two of them right so this is going to shift off into the open waters of the atlantic there's the heavier rains right so on the back side from that cold front for the u.s for the next four days it's still dry right i mean for a good part of the country there's not much happening. You can replace with much drier conditions. Uh, yes, the only game in town is up here in the Pacific Northwest, far outskirts and portions of Washington. But nonetheless, there's not really much precipitation back behind that uh, front and underneath this ridge of high pressure that's going to be backing off to the west. And there's the drier conditions. These are dew points, right? These are dew points. Typically, you got to be about 55 to ring out any precipitation. It's hard to find a 55 on the map. You basically got to be along that cold front, right? And obviously where Edalia is. But other than that, there's under the ridge or under that, you know, clearer conditions, less humid, humid conditions for much of the U.S. as the ridge will be backing off to the west. So this is where the ridge would look like you know, by the time we head into Thursday, right? So it continues to back off. It's highlighted over the desert Southwest, replaced with much cooler conditions. But look what happens, right? So look what happens as it comes back. As the ridge comes back, it's going over a drier air mass, right? Dry air cools quick, dry air heats up quick. So this is gonna be rapidly fueling this ridge and really maximizing luckily the calendar flips to september because we're going to be well above average you got lower sun angle you got less daytime heating less daytime uh, less daytime to work with essentially but you got the ridge coming back into the areas that just left it with that massive heat dome coming back with a ton of sinking air so by the time we head into your Labor Day weekend, you got much of the country well above average for a good 70%. The only cooler conditions is going to be away from that ridge of high pressure. And that's where you're going to have the cooler conditions and the rain probabilities across the Pacific Northwest, back through Idaho, back through portions of Utah, heading into Wyoming, you know, and Wyoming and Montana region there, but for much of the Eastern two thirds of the US it's pretty high and dry. That's indicative of what the Climate Prediction Center has is this summer 2.0 is coming in with a vengeance for meteorology fall starting on Friday. You're gonna have well above average temperatures under this uh, air mass and the only cooler air in town, right? The only below average air is away from that ridge and where that trough is going to be coming down in from the Pacific Northwest. So it's going to be much cooler conditions for you guys. But the rest of the country, a good 78% of you is going to be well above average for your Labor Day weekend. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update. Wire protect you before and after storm.